kick, big point from a big player for Leash. Two again, separate. Referee Cormac Riley actually does add on. Cluxton's had to wait a while, but he won't be in any way dis disturbed by that to put the goal between them. And that is gorgeous from Stephen Cluxton. Again, like the one earlier on, which I thought drifted a bit. That never left its line from the moment it came off to his left boot. A goal between them. Leash, have they got a 30-second drill? If we even have that long to get a goal, they need possession from the kick-out. Right. Michael Darrow McCauley up after it, and he drives right at Leash. Lost the ball. How long will they have, Leash? The referee has a look at the whistle, and there is the whistle for full time. He had a glance at his watch. He only added 40 seconds on. The substitutions yeah. alone would have taken that Take up and the run-up from the goalkeeper, Stephen Cluxton. Leash not happy at all. Dublin win it by three, but they've been anything but impressive. Oh, it, it, workmanlike is, is, is at best is what you can describe Dublin today. They were not impressive whatsoever. I mean, it seemed to me, as far as I'd be concerned, very, very, very complacent coming in here, and they nearly paid a price. Pairings for this year's football semi-finals. Dublin will play Mayo. That will be on Sunday, the 2nd of September. Joe Brawley and Colin O'Rourke with me here in the studio. Uh, colleague, uh, our colleague Kieran Whelan was watching this match with us here in the box and he was an anxious man for most of that game, in fairness. Yes, he's a very nervous individual, all right. <laughs> Especially <laughs> after Dermot <laughs> Cole. He was taken <laughs> off in the tilt and the first goal disappeared. But uh, <laughs> It was an extraordinary, extraordinary bad performance by Dublin that second half. And uh, Pat Kilroy will go home and scratch his head and wonder what he was doing, I think, with a, f a few of his substitutions. I thought taking off Dennis Bastic was strange. I thought he was doing quite well. Bernard Brogan been taken off. Onogara been left on. Onogara invented new silly mistakes there for the whole of the second half. He did all sorts of stupid things. Bringing on Kieran Kilkenny, the best young attacker in the game, and leaving him out around the middle of the field. I don't know what was going on, but the Dublin forward line for the whole of the second half was in complete disarray and they've got by with the skin of their teeth and they will need to learn a lot from it because mm. a performance like that wouldn't well, be well, male. I, I, I'll, I'll refine it I think, I mean uh, it pains me to say it about Pat who's a friend of mine but it was an utterly clueless managerial performance, I mean Leash with the simple ploy of putting Billy Sheehan at full back and leaving him as an extra defender, totally flummoxed of them. I mean, at no stage did Pat push a man on to him. At no stage, the Dubs were controlling possession. I mean, they were in, they had a vice control of possession. Mm. And yet, they continued to sit back in their defensive shell. And there were times with a wee bit of luck that Leash might have got another score or two. Now, Leash, because they were stuck in a defensive shell, it's always going to be difficult for them to win the game. Dublin won the game purely because of ferocious hard work. It was a tale of incompetence from start to finish on the Dublin sideline. But Genuinely, not, a tale they not of just absolute go, incompetence. Did they not just go for a containment of this Yeesh. match? Because they knew they were doing... They were, they were in total control. What did they need to contain? But every time... And I mean, the Dublin forwards... One O'Gara was in it. He was totally outnumbered. There were three defenders on him at all times. And instead of Pat pushing his men on when they were in total control of the game, I mean, they sat back and defended, and then he started to take off Bastic. Took off Brogan with eight minutes to go, just to mm. damage his confidence a bit. What brought on, like brought on a debutant. I think, I think Joe should say what he thinks the, a bit more. No, on, but I mean, on, like, I mean on, it's, it's, it's pretty no obvious. Leash were limited. Leash didn't score from play in the second half, and yet Dublin left them hanging on. Now, uh, Leash were organised. They set out to limit Dublin's attacking potential, which they did, but they did it very easily Kerry with, was blown with, away, Colin. with a lot of help from Dublin. I just couldn't understand how yeah. he'd bring on Kieran Kilkenny and not push him up into a position where he would do damage. All right, lads, uh, the man of the match from this football quarterfinal is Dublin's number 10, Paul Flynn. He's talking to Gary McDonough. Thanks, Michael. Paul, happy to get out of that one with a win. Yeah, relieved, I suppose. Like, you know, it was uh, tough going, tough going out there. Leash uh, really, really put it up to us in the second half. Never got, never let us get, get away from them. We made a lot of mistakes ourselves. We kicked a lot of silly wides. We weren't uh, too, um, we weren't too clinical up front. Now, in fairness, but their pressure was immense all the way. They never gave up, not to the bitter end. Uh, fair play to Leash and uh, the really team going places. Was it hard coming into it because everybody had the overwhelming favourites and people were saying Leash shouldn't even turn up? Yeah, well, we knew it wasn't going to be that way. We've seen the way they played against Mead. They had a bit of momentum with them. They were playing really, really nice football against Mead. And uh, you see the tackling they were doing. They were really, really putting a lot of pressure on the lads. And uh, they did the exact same out there today. They're, um, they played really well. Well, Paul, you are the centre man of the match. And Luke Moriarty will now present you with your award. Paul, congrats. Well done. 
Well done too, Paul Flynn. Dublin yeah. are the winners. They won it by a goal. That goal came in the first half, as it turned out, and it turned out to be very important in the well, end. Well, if truth be told, you know, the, it, this, this, what happened to the Dubs today wasn't down to the players, in my view. You know, it was a, really a tale of managerial incompetence. I mean, if Kerry had clocked what Leash's simple tactic was, I mean, they would have completely destroyed them. They would have pushed on from all over the. I think you know we had to we had to dig hard there today. Uh, at least through everything at that, and you know defensively they were excellent. They made life very very difficult for us, you know, and um, we had to stick with it. And, and we you know it wasn't pretty at times, but I mean we got over the line. Well, let's not kid ourselves. You know, that that performance out there is not going to get us to an all Ireland final. So look, we've four weeks to put our heads down and you know try and get try and uh, suppose try and get the performance up and hopefully ask questions in Mayo the next day. Got it, got it for the guys because they did really give a really huge battling performance and I think probably or maybe we may deserve more out of that game. Um, of the uh, freak goal was the difference between the two teams and it's, it's very hard to take a defeat like that. We've seen the way they played against me, they had a bit of momentum. After that defeat to Longford early on, you went on a really good run, you must be happy enough the way things progressed this season. There's nobody in that dressing room happy tonight, nobody at all. Mm, so, that match, you won't have to cut your fingernails for a while. Yeah, absolutely. Like, listen, it wasn't the most impressive Dublin performance in, in the world, but I think Leash deserve great credit. Uh, I thought it was a very spirited performance. They made life extremely difficult for Dublin. They implemented a game plan for, to damage limitation to a certain degree, and I don't think Dublin probably reacted that well to it. Dublin probably should have. The Leash forward line never really offered uh, offered a threat. They got four points from play to only two of their inside or two of their forward line scored. Dublin should have maybe pushed on a bit, and it was in Dublin's forward line where they just lacked a bit of shape and they lacked a bit of bit of cohesion. And you know, Bernard wasn't going that well inside. And you know, there's a few substitutions that were a bit strange. You know, Kieran Kilkenny came on, and his threat is in close to goal, but he played out around the middle. You know, Dermot Connolly was doing reasonably well, but the, he w just wasn't getting support. He got mm. dispossessed a few times in the second half. I just thought the shape of the forward line, they missed Alan Brogan, obviously. And um, it, it's, it's a poor performance, but if I saw one glimmer of hope yesterday, Michael, it was that they, they showed a bit of hunger and desire that was lacking in previous games. Yes. And, and that is.